Evelyn was a brutal thug to whom murder was routine. In leisure hours, he could be good-natured. So on the day when Curly decided to celebrate his birthday in Tombstone, Wyatt didn't know whether the day would result in fun-making or trouble. I seen that, Doc. You put that back. Man, please checkers with you needs four eyeballs. Howdy, Chief. Howdy. Wyatt isn't back yet? No, sir, he ain't. Quiet. I'm studying the next move. I'm sorry to interrupt your game, Doc, but the entire Clanton outfit just rode into town. In the middle of the week? It seems that it's Curly Bill Broach's birthday. They're overflowing the birdcage and the Oriental. Well, Brocious never had any birthday. He wasn't born. He was hatched out of a rattlesnake's egg. Trouble, Doc. I hope that's why it's coming now. Howdy. Hello, Wyatt. What? Mr. Gibbs, you and Doc go check out the Clantons. Now, don't touch this board. I got Gibbs and three more moves. You ought to play a little more checkers, Deacon. It might arouse the killer fever. Yeah, well, that's just what I don't want today. To keep Doc from fighting. All we're after is a head count on the Clantons and an idea of what they're up to. All right, Chief. Just a minute, Fred. Well, it's going to take all of us, you know. Yeah, I know that, but uh, I'd like to talk to you a minute. Sit down, would you? I, uh... Well, I've been kind of wanting to caution you for a long time. Caution me? About what? Well, sir, I know it's not my place to tell you how to be a peace officer. You've been at it a lot longer than I have, but... Well, you worry me, Fred. It just never occurs to you that a hoodlum could start shooting. Now, what man would want to shoot me? Well, a fella does things when he's drunk that he wouldn't do when he's sober. Yeah, I know that. But I don't take any chances. Oh, yes, you do, Fred. You sure do. You're too brave for your own good. Now, it's going to be rough today. There's going to be a lot of clans in town wanting to whoop it up. We know that. If they get mean about it, we put them in jail. Well, that's what we always do. I know that. But you take your life in your hands every time you try to talk a cowboy out of fighting. I have to do my work in my own way, Wyatt. What would you have me do? Just don't argue with him so long. You know, you can only be wrong once in this game. That's right. Thanks, Wyatt. You're a good friend. I'll be careful. <laughs> Boys are setting him up for Curly. I what came to pay my respects to the gentleman. How old are you, Curly? I don't know, and I don't care. I don't know it's your birthday. <laughs> Johnny Ringo says it's my birthday. You gonna argue with Ringo? Hello, oh, Doc. Howdy, Doc. It's really me. Old man Clanton's really by him, but we ain't told him yet. Thank you, Curly. I consider it an honor to congratulate one of the world's most likable scamps on his natal day. Did you hear that, boys? Doc and me's had our differences, but he comes around on my birthday. Good old Doc. Bring it mm. Give him a glass. Here you are, Doc. Thank you. Your birthday, sir. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad, he says. That bourbon's 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Rolls on you. Tell me, Curly, do you have the whole celebration planned? We sure have. We're going to stay here for a while, ain't we, boys? Are you going to shoot up Allen Street? I'm all going to the dance hall. Got any better ideas, Doc? No, I'd say that's perfect. Happy birthday, my dear brochure. Mmm. Parties are starting, Doc. I'll be back. Save me some of that aged nectar. Sure will. Hey, Buster, keep a bottle of this just for Doc, huh? Hey, Curly, you're always cussing Doc Holliday. You hate him. Oh, forget it. Doc's all right. Step up, boys. Come on, Ethan. It's my birthday. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, 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 Jimm
hell? You think so? Hey, I thought you said we were gonna shoot a balance. Yeah. 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 Well, that's right. Get the gun. Yeah. 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 Quiet! Yeah. Quiet! Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. You heard him. Yeah. Quiet, quiet. I'm Curly Bill, and this is my birthday. We gotta celebrate and celebrate good. All right, let's have it. Get your gun! You can hear as good as I can, Bian. You're supposed to be the sheriff of this county. You gonna do anything about those guns out there? Fred, you're giving too much importance to a little noise and fun making. Maybe that I am. But we both know that guns and liquor are a bad mixture. I aim to do what my job calls for. Do you? You don't have to do anything. They'll go home after a while. Nothing will happen. Then you won't help me disarm them? No. And you're an old fool if you think you can take guns away from the Clanton boys. Go to bed and shut your ears. You're a puny excuse for a sheriff, Ben. I'll return this favor someday. Shoot up the jail tomorrow, Curly. Tomorrow? All right. Yeah, tomorrow. Let me have your gun. I'll keep it for you. Your gun, Curly. I'll take it. All right. All right. I'll take it. Well, how bad is it, Fred? Stomach. Get him over to Dr. Goodfellow. If he's not there, find him. Yes, sir. You two, lend a hand. All right, get off the street. Rack your guns. There's been enough shooting for one day. Go on, move. Oh, you're blessed enough. Come on, Curly. It's your birthday. Breaking up a good party. What happened? You shot old Fred. You did. Me? No, I didn't. I didn't mean to. I saw it. I know you didn't mean to. You're going to jail anyway. All right. Fred. Fred. Do you think that Brocious meant to shoot you? No. I asked for his gun. He took it out of the holster. I was afraid he might change his mind. I grabbed the barrel and yanked it. 
I made the gunfire. That's exactly the way I saw it happen. Fred, would you try and sign this now? Got any chance? Mm-hmm. What? The whole town's a gang up to hang Hurley Bill if Fred don't make it. Dr. Goodfell, I'm gonna have to leave. You want over and talk to Dick Gerd. I want some dynamite, about 200 feet of fuse. Got an idea why? You know, I aim to plant dynamite underneath Allen Street in a circle around the jail. You think it's going to get that bad? Well, I hope it doesn't, but I want to be prepared if it does. Go ahead. Yeah. Of course, if they should try to rush the jail, you only play it and scare them, right, Wyatt? Might seem too impertinent of me, but when are you going to start killing Never, I hope. The last words of a tender-hearted church deacon. Today. Get on down there in a hurry, and I'll hand you the dynamite. Well, let me get this here lantern lit. I ain't got the eyes of a bat, you know. Well, you never have any trouble seeing a silver dollar at 100 feet. Yeah. The dynamite. There's the first line. You got it? Yep. Run it down. Boys, it's all over. Now listen, you men. Fred White was our friend. He was the best man this town ever had. Brocious murdered him. We ain't wasting time on a trial. You're right, Cookie. He didn't deserve a trial. Red White's gone. With the Clantons in jail and the mob on its way, why don't you let nature take its course? Uh, Curly didn't mean to shoot Mr. White. The rest of the Clantons were only drunk and disorderly. There ain't one of them who doesn't deserve to hang for some reason. Don't tempt me. Give me that line, will you? almost here. What are you doing about it? The best I can, Mr. Clinton. Did you leave your horse out front? We're sure. Move him around back. I'm coming in with the rest of my men. That mob can't hang Curly Bill and leave this town standing. 
We'll stop him, Mr. Clanton. Mr. Gibbs? When you hear me fire a shot, you let off the first blast. You don't have to wire out and hear him tramping towards us. That's far enough. Hold it right there. I got dynamite planted underneath this whole street. You're bluffing, Earp. We want Curly Bill. Turn him loose, Earp. Now, you men listen and listen good. I'm not turning my prisoner over to you. Any man that makes a rush for this jail is going to get hurt. Now, don't try it. Earp's bluffing. Move up. Get the next one ready, Mr. Gibbs. Now, Corky, I'm going to give you and your men five seconds to get out of here. The next one's going to go off right underneath your feet. They had enough. Come on up, Mr. Gibbs. All right, what about Curly Bill and the rest of my men? Rushus is going to have to stand trial. The rest of your men will be released in the morning. Oh, you're going to hang Curly, but legal, is that it? I'm going to try and save him if I can, Mr. Clinton. Oh, sure, you're going to save him. Well, don't bother. I'll save him myself. I'll tree this town and burn it to the ground. Mr. Clinton, you just treed yourself. Get his guns. Mr. Gibbs, open up that door. You think you can intimidate the law? Well, I'm going to give you a nice, cool spot that you can think about it, Mr. Clinton. Get in. Let him let my boy push you. Whack you on a push push you. Whack you on a Lovely performance, Wyatt. But I would have been more pleased if you'd kill him. However, this is a good start. Now, after Curly Bill is hanged. That won't happen if I can help it. What? He killed Fred White. Shooting at a star isn't allowed. Up to now. No matter what they said, I didn't mean to shoot Fred White. Mr. Brocious, your gun was pointed directly at Mr. White at extremely close range, and then it was discharged. Now, do you expect this court to believe that you, an expert with guns, did not deliberately fire that gun? I don't know how it happened. I'm telling the truth. Marshal White asked me for my gun. I was giving it to him. Barrel first? I don't know. I was handing it over and he grabbed at it and it went off. And that's all you can tell us? I was drunk. I really don't know how it happened. I'm telling the truth. Well, fortunately, we have a witness who was not drunk. That's all, Mr. Brocious. Step down. Marshal Earp, will you take the stand, please? Yes. Marshal, you saw the shooting. Would you present your testimony, please? Yes, sir. Mr. White asked Mr. Brocious for his gun. Mr. Brocious drew his gun, but before he had a chance to hand it over properly, Mr. White grabbed the barrel. The gun was accidentally discharged. Mr. Brocious did not intend to kill Mr. Fred White. <laughs> I fail to see how the gun could have fired unless it was cocked. And if it was cocked, Curly Bill must have intended to use it. Well, not necessarily, sir. Mr. Earp, I too have some knowledge of firearms. I realize that accidents can happen, but a gun cannot be fired unless it's cocked. Well, if Your Honor will permit, I would like to demonstrate how it happened. Please do. Now, this is Mr. Brocious's gun. Your Honor, I have here some 45 blanks. Your Honor, while you have Colt 45s and know how to use them, we must remember that Curly is a professional gunfighter. Now, how do you cock your 45? I put the ball of my thumb on the hammer and pull it back. Like this. Right. OK. 
Curly doesn't do that. All professional gunfighters hook their thumb across a hammer like that. The reason they do that is they don't trust the ball of the thumb. It might slip off, cause a misfire. Now, let's assume that the gun is sitting in the holster like that. Now, when Mr. White asked Curly for the gun, Curly's first move to hand the gun over to Mr. White should have been to grab the grip like that. That is, if he was sober, but Curly was drunk, so he followed habit. He came down top of the gun, thumb went all the way around the hammer like that. And the gun was on half cock? Well, no, sir, it was on quarter cock. Now, you yourself never use a half cock unless you're going to spin the cylinder to load or unload. That's right, but if the gun were on quarter cock and the hammer almost down, how could it have fired accidentally? Well, sir, I know it sounds far-fetched, but it isn't. Now, if you'll step down here and face me, I'll show you. Now, I'm going to draw the gun the way Curly did. And as soon as the gun leaves the holster, you grab the barrel and give it a yank. I'd better do it slowly. You ready? I didn't believe it was possible. Now, if you were drunk, your thumb was hooked over the hammer, as Curly's was. You wouldn't be able to react in time to turn the gun loose. I also have to remember that Mr. White was very nervous, and he grabbed the barrel and yanked very fast. Let's try it again at normal speed. <clears throat> You're right. Curly didn't have time to take his thumb off the hammer. His cocking the gun was an accident. Mr. Fred White himself caused the gun to fire. Well, Wyatt, you did a good turn for Tombstone today. Congratulations. Pay off, will you? Well, I assure you I will, but not Curly Bill. I know all about Curly Bill. Wyatt... Why in the name of your tin star did you set him free? Why didn't you keep your mouth shut and let him hang him? Because I couldn't. There are times when I can't understand your set of rules. One day you want to clean out the hoodlums, the next you defend a rattlesnake like that and get him all free all by yourself. Why? Because if I allowed one man to be executed unjustly, even a rattlesnake, I'd have to turn in my star. Doc, even you would despise me. I can? I would. That ain't no way to talk, honey. I just want to buy you a little drink. No, stop, you fool. Get up. Do you work at the Alhambra? Yes. They hired me to be a cashier, but I'm not going in there. Not ever. Why don't you wait outside here? Pick him up, Willie. I'm sorry about this, Marshal. I warned everybody to keep the customers away from her. It won't happen again, Miss Silver. Please, I don't want to work for him. All right. If this happens again, you're closed. Why, the kid's just scared. She promised to stay at least a month. You heard her, Mr. Hanson. She doesn't want to work for you anymore. I'll take you over to Nellie Cashman's. Oh. Help Miss Nellie steal my best cashier, huh? Don't press your luck. You may have to buy some new teeth. <laughs> Critics of Marshall Wyatt Earp often remarked that he was implacable when he faced bad men, but much too soft and trusting when it came to women. Alas, the saga of a young lady known as Silver Dollar presented a mystery which numerous men before Wyatt had failed to solve. Was Silver Dollar an innocent child adrift in Tombstone, or was she a calculating and dangerous little hussy? That was awful brave. I'm scared of Mr. Henson. I guess I'm scared of everybody. How old are you? 
twenty. Almost. What's your name? They call me Silver Dollar. That's a strange name. What are you doing here in Tombstone? Oh, it sounded interesting. And they told me in Kansas City there were plenty of jobs here. They did, huh? What's your name? Wider. Are you an experienced officer? Somewhat, yes. That man who's bothering me has friends. What if they had tried to shoot you? I usually manage to talk them out of it. Is that a very practical attitude? You could be severely injured, Mr. Irv. Now, don't you worry about me. It's my job to worry about you. Really? No one's ever worried about me in my whole life before. Well, everything's all right, I guess. Anyway, I put her to work helping Mr. Perkins in the office. Marshal Earp wants to know what I think of his charge, huh? Oh. All right, yes. <laughs> well, Silver Dollar's not much of a name to go on. Well, she's probably a runaway from someplace back east. She wouldn't even talk to you? Not yet. Well, she, uh... She seems like a very nice girl. Mm-hmm. Let's hope so. But, why? I wouldn't do too much vouching for her. Not yet. She's out of the Alhambra, and that's enough for now, isn't it? Of course it is. Thank you very much, Miss Nara. Excuse me. Oh, he's all yours, Silver. I'll see you later, White. She's awful sweet. Uh, she's the best we got. Well, I uh, better get back to work. Wait. Won't we be seeing each other sometime? Miss Silver, I live right here at the hotel, and I am not blind. I'll see you. Where's Wyatt? You there, I reckon. Busy. He's busy rescuing an innocent, odd-looking girl from the cashier's cage at the Alhambra. A little lady known as Silver Dollar. Talking about that new one with the eyes like a heifer calf? Precisely. Oh. This could be love at first sight, Doc. I don't know what it is, but I do know it means trouble. Yeah. He already beat up a cattleman and threatened to knock out Dave Henson's teeth. That girl's a big asset to Dave. She's so innocent looking that all the customers want to marry her. Dad blasted. You know what she's done? She's done caught wide on the first bounce from Miss Nellie. Oh, you don't approve? No, I don't approve at all. Me or Roscoe, either one don't approve. A shotgun, Huck. I want to send a telegram. Pickerton Detectives, Kansas City. It's about a girl that calls herself Silver Dollar. I'll tell him to get this off as soon as possible. I sure will. Well, Doc, we was wrong. It ain't love. Now, can't I ever help a runaway girl without somebody accusing me of falling in love with her? Well, uh, Miss Silver's run away from something or somebody. Now, we... Well, we might be able to help her out. Sounds reasonable. Okay, I'll have another talk with her tonight. I can read the headlines in the nugget right now. Wyatt Earp shot while chatting with pretty female. Not a bad way to go, Wyatt. Excuse me, Mr. Henson? 
Yeah, what is it? My name's Rafe Collins, and I'm looking for a young lady who goes by the name of Silver Dollar. Why? Well, it's a personal matter. Well, I've never heard of any girl with a nickname like that around here. The town isn't big. Look around. Thanks, I will. Forgive me for using your time. Yeah. Send Charlie to the Cashman Hotel. Have him get word to Silver Dollar. There's a young fellow from the country named Collins looking for her. for a constitutional? I mean, this night air is too healthy for you. All right, you talk. Well, uh, Doc says that, that Henson says that that there girl packs uh, 41 Derringer. Well, that's nonsense. She doesn't know a Derringer from a horse pistol. She's just a poor, distracted kid. Well, she even thinks she'd be happy married to me. Remember how this happened? When I opened the door, he was already here. He grabbed me. I pushed him away and got the gun from that drawer. He reached for me again, and I shot him. He's not hurt too bad, Wyatt. No. Take him down to the parlor. Send for Dr. Goodfellow. What happened? It's that young farmer. Is he dead? No, Miss No, he's not hit bad. Oh, do you know who did it? Silver, he told me that you were engaged to marry him. Why did you do this? To protect myself, that's why. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that. No, Miss No, don't be hasty. Get out of here. Both of you. Believe me or call me a liar. But just get out. Get out. Wyatt, I think you better listen to what that young man has to say. I gave her $1,500 to pay off her debts and buy clothes for the wedding. And then she up and ran out on me. What happened tonight? Well, I waited for her here at the hotel. Then I followed her upstairs. All I wanted was to ask her to marry me like she promised. In spite of the fact that she ran out on you once? Oh, yes, sir. I loved her. Were you rough on her? Oh, no, sir. She asked me to leave, and when I wanted to argue, she... She just up and shot me. <coughs> Here's a splendid rib. Talk to him tomorrow, will you? All right. Just a busted rib, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We'll arrest it for you, Wyatt. No, I'll arrest her. Go tell Mr. Henson. He'll probably want to put up bail. Who is it? Marshal Irwin. Just a minute, please. going to arrest me? Well, don't you think you ought to be arrested? Oh. Not if Rafe wasn't hurt off the bat. Candy? Well, what if he'd have been killed? Will I have to stand trial, too? Of course. Assault with a deadly weapon, at least. I don't suppose you'd run off with me to Denver. No. Put on your coat. 
And that's a silly waste of time. No jury is going to convict me. Besides, it's a measly $1,500. Don't you know there's a law against stealing money? I didn't steal it. Rafe gave it to me. A lot of men have given me money. And you don't see anything wrong in that? Why should I? Men have a lot more money than girls do. And if they want to give me some of it, what's wrong with that? They're not giving. They're buying you. Buying me? Nobody does that. Oh, they may think so. I can't stop them from thinking. When this is all over, don't you want to marry me? Miss Silver, I might want to, but I wouldn't. Why not? Well, I'm too cautious. All right. We're not even friendly. You can arrest me this time. But next time, I'll have to shoot you. Why don't you do that? Let's go on to the jail. Hmm? When you found Mr. Collins in your room, Miss Silver, what happened next? Do I have to tell that? You're testifying in your own defense, Miss Silver. The court must advise you to answer. Well, Rafe grabbed me. And he wouldn't let loose. I broke away from him. And back towards the bureau where I kept my gun. And then... Proceed, Miss Silver. He kept after me. I told him to leave or I'd shoot. He reached out to grab me and he said... Well, he said some terrible things. The next thing I knew, he was lying on the floor. And I had the gun in my hand. Are there any further questions? Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Foreman. We've heard enough. We vote unanimously. Not guilty. Case dismissed. You might as well go ahead and make your move, Doc. I ain't taking my eyes off of you. Any answer from the Pinkertons? No, sir, no everything. I just come from the telegraph office. Did Silver get a gun back? Yeah. Judge Spicer released it to her. I took her cartridges, though. If you can buy more. Yeah, I know it. I'm going over to Spangenberg's gun shop pretty soon. Don't waste your time, Wyatt. That woman is a man killer. I'm afraid she is. She said that she was going to shoot me if I tried to arrest her again. Oh, she wouldn't do nothing like that. Well, I'm not going to take the chance. She went back to work at the Alhambra. Hanson double her wages. That won't be enough. Takes a lot of gold to take the tarnish off a silver dollar. She starts any trouble, Gibbs and I will arrest her. No. I've got to find out. There's a box of 41 dummies here someplace. Right here in this drawer. Can you trust Spangenberg to sell her the blank cartridges? Well, I can trust him, but I don't know if Silver's going to fall for it. You tell the uh, telegraph agent to repeat that query to the Pinkertons. Tell them that a prompt reply is urgent. Yes, sir. What do you think, Doc? 
I think that Deacon Earp is a lot closer to his grave than he's willing to admit. That girl took my wallet. I had it right here. But after I danced with her and had a few drinks, it was gone. Are you accusing Silver Dollar? Yes, I am. You hear that, boys? He says Silver stole his wallet. All right, Willie. <laughs> What's your name? Clark. What seems to be the trouble? A girl stole my wallet. I had close to 5,000 in it. Silver dollar? Yeah. Where's our room? None of your business, sir. I you once before. Let's go take a look at her room. Look in those drawers. You can't do it, Herb. You have no right to make a search. Mr. Clark? Yes, sir. It sure is, Marshal. Well, this don't prove nothing. You're just sore at her because she wouldn't marry you. Maybe you're even trying to frame her. You keep on talking. You're going to lose some teeth yet. Count the money. What are you doing here? This is my room. You stole this man's money. That? I never saw it before. Er planted it here, honey. You two gentlemen leave. I'd like to talk to Miss Silva alone. What's the idea? I just want to give you another chance to tell the truth. I don't need another chance. I'm doing all right. Don't you realize that... Stealing that much money is a felony. That you could go to jail for a long time. You have to arrest me first. Remember what I told you? Yeah, you said you'd shoot me. Get out. No. I'll count to four. One, two, three. Oh. I wouldn't have believed it up until now. The world's full of men. Am I to understand, Mr. Clark, that you gave the wallet to Miss Silver? Yes, sir. That's right. What do you say, Marshal? Well, it still doesn't change the fact that she tried to shoot me with that Derringer. Miss Silver? The gun was loaded with dummy shells. I bought them from Mr. Spangenberg, and I think Mr. Earp told him to sell them to me. So you see, it was just one big joke. Marshal, did you plant those cartridges? Yes, sir. Then she can't be accused of assaulting you with a deadly weapon. Mr. Clark, you and Miss Silver may go. Thank you, Judge. Allow me, my dear. Well, of course, he changed his story. But if the Derringer had had live bullets in it, you might have been killed. Yes, sir. And you can bet that the next time she'll use real cartridges. Well, I don't know what to do. I uh, can't run, and I sure can't have a shootout with a girl. Just can't understand how a sweet little thing like that could... Uh, Marshal, I'm going to issue an order to you and your deputies. Now, you stay away from Miss Silver. And keep alive. You understand? Yes, sir. You grab Sonny Boy, and I'll take Silver Dollar. We'll cut through the alley. 
You'll feel better when you've made up your mind. Oh, will I? Yeah. Make it up now. Say you'll marry me. I've always dreamed of living in Denver or San Francisco. Yeah, good places <laughs> to visit, hon, but San Antonio's right lively. Oh, 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 what, what is this? Turn me loose. Carrying a concealed weapon. How naughty of you. I'm surprised, Silver Dollar. Real life cartridges, too. This is outrageous. I'll vouch for her. Vouching for her won't be enough, Sonny. You'll have to get a lawyer. I'll get one. The best in town. Silver? We nailed her, Watt. She was carrying this. A $50 fine, isn't it? I'm sorry, Miss Silver, but it won't be quite that easy. You're wanted in Missouri, armed robbery, a Casey gang. No jury is going to convict me. You found that out once. Lock her up, Mr. Gibbs. You're just wasting a lot of time. Mr. Jack Ramey and his lawyer will have me out in five minutes. Come along, Miss. You know, I think I'll marry Jack. He's a nice, rich boy. Armed robbery. The Pinkertons haven't done justice to our girl. It's a horrible photo. And what's this? Silver Dollar's real name is Bridget Casey? The lawyer's coming. Where's Miss Silver? She's in a cell, being held on a Pinkerton charge of armed robbery. Well, that's a filthy lie. You're not going to torment her. I don't know what happens. I'll wait for her. By God, I'm afraid he will. Maybe she'll change, Doc. Oh, that does it. I'm going over to the birdcage, where I can get away from all the fool men in this world. Please come in. Won't you sit down? Now please tell me what this is all about. We do not come all the way from Mexico just to talk, senor. I want the body of my father. I might be able to help you, but I don't even know your father's name. Huerta, Senor Juan Jose Ambrose Huerta. I am the Senora Huerta. And this is my son, Miguel. Huerta. I do not know the name. If he was killed in Tombstone, I would know it. You tried to hide the murder of my father? Why are you so sure it was a murder? We have been told. You cannot deny it. I'm not trying to deny it. I'm trying to find out about it. Now, you say it happened here? See. When? A month. Perhaps more. We do not know how long it took the letter to reach us. A letter? You have a letter? No se lo desa él. For me, I see it. No, senor. It is for our eyes only. Look, if you want me to help you, you're going to have to cooperate. Look at this. These are the names of all the men that have been involved in police business for the past month. The month before that, and the month before that. Go ahead, read it. Tell me if you can find the name Horet. Maybe he changed his name. That is not possible. My father is not a criminal. I am Brosius, a man of many faults, but not one to go against the law, no. He, he would not have the courage. Well? Está bien, Miguel. Give him the letter.
July. Senora Huerta, I regret to inform you of the death of your husband, Senor Juan Jose Ambrosio Huerta, in this city today. A man named... A man named Granby picked a quarrel with Senor Huerta and shot him in the back. Your husband was blameless in the affair. It will be solace to know that he died with the name Agrippina on his lips. A friend. Do you know who this friend might be? No, senor. The letter was written in English. It was read to us by the padre. The senor Granby. You know him? Well, the only Granby I know is the foreman of the contention mine. That would be the one. My father came here to work in the mines. Well, I doubt it. Mr. Granby's never killed anybody in his life. It might have been done secretly. Uh, somebody knew about this. If I can find this friend, I might be able to get to the bottom of it. You would avenge my father's murder? If there was a murder. What do you mean, senor? Just that nobody by the name of Huerta has been killed in Tombstone, and there have been no unidentified dead. Then what has happened to him? At least he would have written. Come, Madre. I told you they would not help us. Oh. Oh, oh senor. All we ask is that you give us back the body of my husband to take back home. Outside in the carreta is the coffin, already blessed by the padre, and you won't even help. You don't have to ask my help, senora. You couldn't stop me from helping to find him now. Why so? Because if he was killed in Tombstone, I want to know about it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> you know of no man being buried in your parish by the name of Huerta? No. No. And you have never met a man by that name? No, I know. I'm sorry, Senorita. Well, thank you very much, Father. Thank you. I'm sorry, Senor. We were unable to find out anything. Where will you be? We will camp near the dry river bed. If I do find out something, I'll come to you. Senor, what about Granby? I intend to talk to him. You let me handle this. You hear me? Si, senor. I hear you. What brings you all this way? I'm looking for somebody. Well, tell me you're after old George for busting up Minnie's place the other night. <laughs> no. This is murder. Murder? Who? You know a man by the name of Huerta? Huerta? No. Who'd he murder? No one. He was murdered. You're looking for the man who did it, huh? I hear. You sure you never heard of Huerta? I'm sure. Who well, could he have worked here at the mine not too long ago? Nope. That name was not on the payroll. Can't you tell me what this is all about, Wyatt? Well, Mr. Granby, I don't exactly know yet. Do you have any enemies that would like to cause you trouble? Well, I suppose a man who hires and fires is bound to pick up a few. But none that really matter, I'd say. 
Am I supposed to have murdered this fellow? Something like that. Wyatt, do you think I murdered him? No, Mr. Granby, I don't. Well, in that case, come back again any time. you, senor. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We're not hiring today. She will talk to me. My name is Huerta. Huerta? Si. Mike! Why? Four queens. Four kings. Count them, Doc. Just isn't my day. You're beginning to look like a plug chicken, Doc. You can say that again, I'm pluck clean. Never thought I'd see the day I could clean Doc Holliday. Hmm. I'm not finished yet. Here's what. He'll stake me. Stake you, Doc? You mean to tell me you won't stake me to the price of a hand or two? Well, I don't know now. All right, I'll give you my IOU. I'm just joking, Doc. How much you want? 50 or 100? 100. I'm in this hand. Thank you, sir. Your I.O.U. That won't be necessary. Oh, yes, it will. We must keep this on a business-like scale. I wouldn't want anybody to think that I was beholden to the town marshal. It might compromise you or me. Your I.O.U., sir. All right. Worried, Wyatt. Want me to check out? No, I can handle it. You open, Doc? Sure. Five. Say, where's Cortez? You mean the El Conquistador? He's out in the kitchen, rustling up some nice, juicy enchiladas. Why do you call him the Conquistador, Doc? Haven't you ever heard of Hernando Cortez, the conqueror of Mexico? Sure. But this fellow's name is Juan, and he's no conqueror. No? Have you ever seen him with the ladies? Have you ever seen him with an enchilada? Oh, here he is, the El Conquistador. Put it right here, sir. Right here. Wyatt, will you join me in these wonderful little old enchiladas? No, thanks. I'd just like to ask Juan a question. Si, senor. Did you ever hear of a countryman of yours called uh, Huerta? Huerta? No, I do not think so. Does he live here? Well, he uh, said he did. He also said he was dead. I know most of the Mexicanos here. You never heard of him? If I do, I do not remember, senor. Sure you do not want some enchiladas? Gracias, no. Uh, 25 to you, Doc. Yes, 25. Count me in. I'll read you. Wyatt! Mark Clark! Mr. Gamby, what happened to your aunt? That Huerta. He tried to kill me. The boy? Yes, he came to the mine. You've got to do something about that kid. First, let's get Dr. Goodfellow to take a look at your aunt. Come on. not here. You know where he is? I do not, but if I did, I would not tell you. Do you know that he attacked this man here, Mr. Granby? Do you think I blame Miguel? I would gladly kill him myself with my own bare hands. 
Este asesino. I had nothing to do with the death of your husband. I never knew him. I never even heard of him before today. You expect me to believe that? Yes, before you'd believe an anonymous letter. Maybe there's another Granby. Maybe they got the name mixed up. I tell you the truth, Sonora. I did not kill your husband. I do not believe you. Senora. And you. You are a fine marshal. Protecting him, a murderer. Not giving back to us the body of my husband. My poor Ambrosio. Quien sabe donde lo han dejado, pobre. <laughs> Senora, you have a right to be upset. But I must warn you and your boy that we have laws to protect people. Oh, Senor, we too have laws, much older than your laws. An eye for an eye, for a man's life, the life of his killer. Look, if your husband was murdered, I'll find the man who did it. But you must leave that up to me, you understand that? I have heard you. Mr. Granby does not say to arrest Miguel because of the boy's youth. But I say that I will arrest him if he attacks this man again. Now, you tell him I said that. You can also tell him if he comes near me again, I'll shoot first and ask questions later. Mr. Granby, please. I've got a right to protect myself, Wyatt, and I will. Please tell me where the boy is. Well, then you find him yourself and take him on back home before you lose him, too. changed. I came to get my IOU. It doesn't hurt for a man to have a reputation for a quick pay, you know. <laughs> All right. I'll just tear it up. Hmm? Sure. Now, thank you. You're turning in a little early, aren't you? Well, I'm tired of cards, Wyatt. You look a mite worried. I heard you asking the El Conquistador about a man named Huerta. Is that who you're worried about? Yeah. Who's he? Well, he was supposed to have been killed, shot in the back, came up here from Mexico to work in a mine. Hmm. Never heard about that. Neither did I. Can't find any record of it. Who's supposed to have done it? Horace Granby. Granby? Hmm. He ain't much of a poker player, but... I never figured him to be a killer. I don't think he even carries a gun. Well, he does now. It's either kill or be killed by Huerta's son. Think of that. The boy must have loved his father. Well, that, and it's a matter of honor. See, they got this letter telling him about the father being killed. So the mother and the boy came up here to bring the body back. Well, uh, I sure wish Granby luck. I'm not so much worried about him as I am about the boy. Yeah, the boy. What does he look like, Wyatt? In case I happen to bump into him. Oh, he's a good-looking young Mexican, about 16. Wears uh, very light clothes. Big sombrero. Mexican white clothes, 16. Well, in case I bump into him, I might be able to help some. Bye, Wyatt. Get some sleep. I want to talk to you. How about a drink, Wyatt? Now, you know I don't drink. 
Well, you better. Otherwise, you won't believe it. Just tell me. Here? It's an awful long story. I got plenty of time. You wrote that letter, didn't you? Well, I... You sure you want to hear it? Look, I recognize the H and the IOU. Now, why'd you do it? I want to do a favor for a friend. What friend? Huerta, the conquistador. Juan? Yep. Came into town, wanted to work in the mines. Found out he could make more money as a cook, so he changed his name. Why? You tired of married life? Didn't want to go back to Mexico? So you killed him in the letter, huh? No, he did. She would have known his writing. He just told me what to say. I wrote it down. Can't blame me for trying to help out. And what about the sorrow you caused her? What about the sorrow she caused him? Why'd you pick on Granby? He complained about the enchiladas. She had no right to come up here, you know what? Well, she did. Yeah, she did. I'm sorry. I'll find the boy. We'll stop him. All right. You take the east side of town. I'll look over at Granby's boarding house. Most any night you'll find Granby at the Alhambra Saloon. I'll look there, too. Doc, you're a fool. I guess so, Wyatt. I often am when a friend asks my help. Go look for him. Because I'm an officer of the law, and killing's against the law. Put that away, Mr. Granby. What about the killing of my father? I can explain that to you now. Never mind the father. What are you going to do about him, Wyatt? This won't happen again, Mr. Granby. I'll say it won't. Are you going to put him in jail? I said I'd handle this. I don't understand you. I don't understand any of this. Yeah. Here comes a man that can explain it to you. Doc Holliday? That's right. Everything all right, Wyatt? Everything except you got some explaining to do, Mr. Granby. I suggest you two of you go over to the Alhambra. What are you going to be doing? I'm going to take Miguel here over to the office, find his mother, and then treat them both to a late supper. Well? Well, uh, let's have a drink, Horace. What about my father's killer, senor? Let's have supper first, hmm? There's plenty of time for that later. You will not talk me out of it. I will kill him. It's not the proper time for eating. Well, you'll think so after you taste these enchiladas. Believe me, you've never tasted enchiladas so good. Oh. No one makes enchiladas as good as mamacita. For certain, no americano. Well, I think I can safely say that these enchiladas will taste just as good as your mother's. We can see, hmm? Here they come now. Good evening, senor. El conquistador. Put it right on the table. Papa! Lo que ven, mis ojos. Ripinda. Mama, look. It is truly Papa. Ambrosio! Now you don't have to marry senor Miro. Jose Miro. 
How can my wife marry Jose Miro? I am a widow. I mean, I, I was a widow. Oh, Ambrosio. Even if I was dead, how could you think of Jose Miro? Ambrosio, the letter, the letter said you was killed. My own wife. I, he spoke so kindly to me again. After all to these me. years, oh, and I all I have done for you. Ambrosio, escucha me. How could you? Oh. <laughs> for that worthless pig. <laughs> Ambrosio, look, I, I, I came here to take back your poor body home. Uh-huh. I... To prove to everyone that you were a widow. No. No, Ambrosio. Oh, you are cruel. No, 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 no. There, there, pobre Sulta. Do not cry. I will take you back. Oh, Ambrosio. Three murders in less than five hours. Cowhand, a miner, and a store clerk. Why? Gun smugglers, maybe. Oh, that doesn't make sense. These were poor men. They had to work hard for the living. Maybe they gambled. With what? Well, did you ever see any of these? Arizona lottery, Deacon. Of course I've seen it. Why would they be killed for lottery tickets? They haven't even had the drawing yet. How do you know? Maybe that Prescott crowd is a little slow in telling the newspapers the results. The Prescott gang wouldn't get involved in murder. No, it would have to be the 10% ring in Tucson. You think they've taken over? Why, that Shiloh Smith would try anything. Well, the papers have done say that Governor Fremont himself is handling the drawing. Uh, he wouldn't get involved in something like that. Granted, but five will get you ten that those Tucson boys must have a man installed somewhere and were tipped off as to the winning numbers and whoever bought those tickets. Let's go check the men that were killed. See if we can find out whether they bought tickets. <laughs> Milligan. Excuse me, boys. Johnny got a deal I want to talk to you about. In the back room. Johnny don't want a deal. What Clara means, Mr. Milligan, is that I'm uh, kind of busy right now. This won't take two minutes. All right. Take over, please. Johnny, will you? Johnny, take this. What's that for? You may need it, honey. <laughs> honey, I know Mr. Milligan. Johnny, please, take it. All right, all right. Are you satisfied? Honey, be careful. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, sir, Mr. Milligan. Now, Johnny, I I'm not going to beat around the bush. Want to sell your lottery ticket? My lottery ticket? Well, you got one, ain't you? I uh, might have. Well, I'm buying up tickets. Now, I know you're a bad luck boy. That's why they call you Johnny Behind the Deuce. That's right. Still and all, I reckon I could give you twice what you paid for it. Well, now, that's a nice sum, Mr. Milligan, but uh, I promised Clara I wouldn't sell it. Uh, she's working on a hunch. What do you want for it? Well, I told you, Mr. Milligan, I can't sell it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. I've got to have it. Well, hold on there. Why pick on me? Come on, hand it over. Well, I told you I can't. Why, you... I'll get a good lawyer for you, honey. Just a minute, Miss Claire. You're in love with Johnny, aren't you? I want to marry him. Why? Because Johnny's in a lot more trouble than he realizes. He's still in danger. Did you know that Milligan is part of the 10% ring? Yes, Johnny met him in Tucson. Milligan was working for Shiloh Smith. Kind of a big political J. Yes, I know, Mr. Smith. Do you have any idea why he would want to have Johnny killed? 
No. We bought a lottery ticket. Milliken tried to force Johnny to sell it to him. And when Johnny wouldn't, he, he drew his gun. Johnny killed him in self-defense. And that's the truth, Mr. Earp. I believe you. Well, I didn't think you would. Well, I do. Now, where do you have the ticket? You'd have to search me to find it. Well, I, I don't think I'll try that. Look, uh, three men were killed because of their lottery ticket. Now, I suggest you hide yours in a safer place. I'll hide it real good. One more thing. Don't try to get Johnny out of here. But I promised him. Believe me, he wouldn't stay alive long if he was out. You're right, Mr. Earp. He would be safer in jail. All right. I'm going to have to leave town for a few days. Anybody ask you, you just uh, tell them that Johnny's being held here for Milligan's shooting. That's all you know about it. I'm a clam. Thanks, Mr. Earp. Thanks very much. I'll be in Tucson about sundown. You think Shiloh Smith still got that list of winners in his office? I don't think he'd keep it any other place. I'm glad he doesn't know you. But you better leave that badge off. Don't take your shotgun in. I vote that we put the pistols on Shiloh and force him to show us the list. No, I don't want him to see me. If he does see me, why, he'll know I'm onto his scheme and he'll try to cover up everything. I wish you'd let me handle it my own way. Well, let's go. Yes? Well, what is it now? There's a big hayseed out there. Says he has to talk to you. Says it's important. All right, I'll see him. But don't let anyone else in. Close up and go on home. Yes? Mr. Smith will see you now, but only for a few minutes. Come in. Well, thank you kindly. Well, well, my friend. Now, what can I do for you? Well, sir, I've been cheated in that there lottery. You've been cheated? Yes, sir. I'm astonished. Five tickets I bought them. And all of them sure winners, too. Now, why ain't I been paid? Well, now, that's simple, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones. Ezra T. Jones. You see, Mr. Jones, the official drawing hasn't even been held yet. Well, that ain't the way I heard it. They tell me them winners was drawed over at Prescott several days ago. Who told you that? Well, the same fellow that told me I had them winning tickets. He seen the list. Well, that's news to me. Well, you're the high monkey monk around Tucson, ain't you? Looks to me like you ought to be able to get a hold of that list. If there is one, I might be able to. But the winning numbers will be announced in the newspapers, and there's no reason why you can't wait. Oh. Watch the doors. I'm going to switch in first. There it is. I want to copy down these names. Take the list and let's get out of here. No. I don't want him to know that whoever slugged him found his paper. I told you he'd have it with him. I don't know about you two, but me and Wasco were hot taking it out of here before that fella wakes up. Listen, the list of numbers from the big lottery. Yeah? 690, 531, 875. Mr. Annings? Yes? My name is Marshall Lerp. You're the uh, assistant manager of the lottery, aren't you? Yes, I am. Come in, Marshall. Thank you. What can I do for you? Well, sir, you can uh, tell me when you're going to pay off the local winners. Well, as soon as the money reaches the Tombstone Bank tomorrow. I'm glad to hear that. 
Now, can you give me a list of uh, the names of the winners? Well, the only list of names is of the original purchases, and it's in Prescott. But I don't need it. You see, uh, we don't pay by names. We have to pay by winning numbers. How's that? Well, uh, lots of folks sell and resell their tickets, Marshal. It's a rule of the lottery to pay by number. I see. Well, I'll be at the bank tomorrow when you pay off. Glad to have you. Thank you. Howdy, Miss Johnny's ticket just won. I, I just saw the number at the newspaper. Well, congratulations to both of you. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Just imagine, $15,000. We, we can do anything we ever wanted to. Say, have you got that ticket safely hidden? Oh, yes, I have it in my room. Uh, do you know Mr. Ross at the bank? Uh-huh. Well, you take that ticket and put it in an envelope and go over to Mr. Ross. Tell him I said that uh, he should put it in the vault for you. Oh, all right. Oh, Mr. Earp, don't forget to tell Johnny the reason I can't get him out of jail. Well, after he hears about all that money, I don't think he'll mind staying in jail a mite longer. No. Now, you go on and get that ticket. Just a minute, honey. Back up. Back up. I don't know you. What's the meaning of this? I want that lottery ticket that your man stole from my room. I don't know what you're talking about. You hand it over. Now give me that pop gun. You give me that ticket. I'll give you nothing. <laughs> Me. See how bad he's hit. Why don't you come to me first? There wasn't time. I, I thought he might have hit it or, or passed it on to someone else. I... Well, he's going to live, I'm sorry to say. He's got hit in the shoulder. You take him on over to the hospital. Tell Dr. Goodfellow to keep this quiet. I don't want those other thieves scared off. You come with me. Okay, come on, Shiloh. You ain't hitting the legs. All right, break it up. Go on, break it up. There's nothing to look at. They all got homes to go to. Go to them. Uh, look, I want you to stay alive, so I'm going to put you in jail. Any of your friends try to bail you out, you refuse. I want you to ask for protective custody, you understand? Yes, sir, I'll do whatever you say. Will I go to prison for shooting him? Well, that depends on Judge Spicer. Johnny will plead self-defense. 
and shooting Milligan. I think you'll be cleared. But your only defense is to tell everything about Shiloh Smith and about the theft of that ticket. I intend to, Mr. Earp. Good. Well, I guess we're ready. You can open up the doors. But remember, Marshal, I'm not responsible for what you do. I'll take full responsibility. Well, it's about time you open the door. Good morning, Gibbs. 69073, $100. Well, you did all right, too. I hear the winner. Look at that. 531 one, one, eight. Real easy money. Thanks. $250. Give it to me. Thank you. Marshal Earp, I'll buy you a five gallon can of milk. Thank you, Ethan. You're welcome. Hello, Doc. <laughs> 115-8. Oh. $5,000. 875-19. You men are under arrest. Hold it. Hey. Get over there. I ain't dying for Shiloh Smith. You better say that in court. Those tickets don't belong to you or Mr. Smith. They belong to two murdered men. Now go on. Let's go. I wish this trial was over. I wish I'd never bought that lottery ticket. Honey, how can you say that? $15,000? That'll take us anywhere we want to go. Clara, you talk like all we got to do is bow to that judge and then walk out of the courtroom. And then catch a boat for Paris or someplace. Oh, honey, what are you worried about? Marshal Earp said that, that, that you'd get off. And Shiloh Smith can't deny that he had that ticket stolen from my room as soon as I tell the judge just how it happened. Yeah, honey, yeah, the court will turn us loose. Well? But then the 10% ring will kill us. You just don't understand, honey. You just don't understand, that's all. This lottery is big. It's bigger than you know. The whole territory's mixed up in it. Men are killed for the tickets, honey, before they're drawn. Shiloh knew my ticket would win. And if you say anything about anything in court, you and I are as good as buried. But, Johnny, I'll go to jail. Well, look, maybe not, honey. Maybe not. He, uh, he didn't die, you know. All right, Johnny, I'll, I'll do whatever you say. Well, it just ain't fair. It ain't fair, that's all. The first chance we get, and it turns into worse than what we had before. Johnny, don't. I love you no matter what happens. Well, I love you too, Clara. More than you know. That's why you've got to do just exactly like I told you. All right? All right, Johnny. Johnny, time for your trial, son. Good luck, honey. And, uh, Miss Claire, uh, Marshal Earp won't see you before your trial starts, so if you please, we'll just wait out here. Sit down, won't you? Talk to Judge Spicer. I'd like to go over your testimony. I haven't got any testimony. Well, you told me yesterday that, that you... That was yesterday. Somebody threatened you? Look, Miss Clara, I have no proof without you. I need your testimony. And I need to stay alive. Well, I've thought about that. I'll bet you have. You win your case and Johnny and I'll go free. Only where are we going to go? We couldn't stay in Tombstone. And we'd never get out alive. I think you stand a good chance for acquittal. But my charges against Shallow Smith are made. Johnny's being set free right now. And there is a way to leave Tombstone. 
be watching the, the, the stage lines and the roads. How... I promise to get you out of town safely, Miss Clara. The rest is up to you. What's up to me? Whether you testify against Smith. Now, I don't want to lose this case, but I can afford to lose it. I don't think you can afford to let me. It's time you went to court. I want this handled in my way, understand? If the court please, Your Honor. Proceed. I represent Mr. Smith, the complaining witness. He does not wish to press charges against Miss Nelson. I see. Marshal Earp? Yes, sir. Mr. Smith has dismissed his charges. Now, are there any other witnesses to Miss Nelson's alleged assault with a deadly weapon? No, sir. Very well. This court rules for dismissal. Your Honor? Yes. Even though the complaining witness against Miss Nelson does not wish to press charges, she is my principal witness and has knowledge of facts. Therefore, I ask the court to hear her testimony. Miss Nelson, you will take the stand, please. him to give me back Johnny's ticket, he wouldn't do it. I saw the man that hit me hand it to Mr. Smith, so I knew he had it. But then he started to rush me, and I was afraid if he got the gun, he'd, he'd kill me. So I shot him first. I see. What gave you this great fear of Mr. Smith? A man named Milligan, who, who used to work for Mr. Smith at Tucson. He tried to rob Johnny of the same ticket, and that's when Johnny shot him in self-defense. Well, it would appear that Mr. Smith is guilty of suborning two felonies at least. The court rules that Mr. Smith be held without bond. You can't hang anything on me. That will do, sir. Marshal. Sit down. Miss Nelson, the court must hold you as a material witness against Smith. You mean I don't have to go to prison? Well, a citizen who tells the truth when she doesn't have to deserves the court's consideration. This court is adjourned. Thank you, Miss Clara, for all your help. And for having faith that I'd think of a way of getting you out of town safely. Shiloh Smith would have never been convicted otherwise. She was a lot smarter than me, Marshal. I, uh, I was dead sure they'd kill us. Well, they didn't. We'll be free now. Thanks, Marshal. I guess sometimes people just have to trust each other. Sometimes they do. Come on. Ah, what's your head? Now, don't make a sound until you get outside of town. The hearse won't talk if you don't. All right. Thanks. Thank you much. Walk him slow until you're way outside town. Thank you. 